Hey everyone, Matt from Doctors Running. We're going to do a quick talk on the Reebok Forever Floatrite Energy 3.0. We've got a lot of really good questions and figured, hey, let me interrupt my day from teaching because I need a break to talk about this shoe. So this has been a very exciting shoe. Uh, we at Doctors Running have really loved the previous version. I really liked version 2 as well. This shoe has definitely improved uh, in many ways from each of the previous versions. I want to kind of talk about and answer some of the questions as to what's going on here. So the most obvious one, Simon, thanks for the question regarding what's the difference between, say, this and the Symmetros and the Run Fast 3. First of all, the Symmetros is the original Reebok shoe that started introducing this really wonderful beveled heel. The Symmetros is the most extreme one. This one is good. It's The Symmetros has a, a more beveled heel. It feels like it has a little bit firmer ride and a little bit more stack height to it. Don't quote me on that. I should look at the specs, but it just feels a little taller off the ground. So that's a Symmetros. You're going to get a little narrower, narrower toe box, a little bit more structure, especially in the front of the shoe in the Symmetros. The Run Fast 3 is a, is a speed shoe. I don't currently have mine yet. Both Nathan and Bach have their pairs. We've been able, and Nate, David and I have been drooling, what, looking at what they have. So we're looking forward to getting ours. But that is a fast shoe. It's going to fit snugger, much lighter than any of the other shoes out there in the Reebok line, other than obviously the the Run Fast Pro. It's again snugger, much closer to the ground, much faster, much more responsive, a little stiffer. The Flowride Forever Energy three P three P O. Star Wars reference, uh, 3.0 is kind of a, it's, it's a mid range between those. Metro is a little heavier. The fluoride energy is a little lighter and each version has gotten lighter and lighter and lighter. So I, I personally of these, I love the Symmetros. I know I'm sure I'm going to like the run fast three. Hopefully, um, I was a huge fan of the run fast one. Hope wasn't the biggest fan of the run fast two. I'm hoping they fix some of those things. So I'm really excited for version three. This is your lightweight trainer do everything shoe. The Symmetros could move, but it was much more of a trainer. Run Fast is a fast shoe. It's not a trainer. This one can do everything. I have done trail runs in this. They're, I can't tell you more, but they may have something that may work better on trails. But I've taken this for trail, a 20 mile trail run. I have done easy runs in this. I've done really good workouts. So this, like mile repeats, 400s have done really well in this, which the 400s surprised me, but this foam is good. So if you want a shoe that can do a has range into everything, this is your shoe. I like lightweight trainers. I'm a little biased, but hey, that's 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 just who I am. So I think if you want something that can find it that can fit your everyday need, if you're like I'm a little beat up, I want to go do a workout, but I'm not sure, this would be the one that I would put on my feet. So that's going to be up to you about whether it's worth the money spending it. But I personally like this version. Trey asks, can you talk about the fit comparison between the Float Ride, the Float Ride Energy 2.0, 3.0, and the Symmetros? The Float Ride Energy, Forever Float Ride Energy 2.0 felt like it had a little bit more room throughout. It just the upper was just a little bit more flexible. The Float Ride Forever Energy 3 still has a good amount of room for this kind of shoe. It's it's not wide, it's just more normal width, but it feels more refined. You've got a little bit more kind of snugness, snugness to the midfoot heel. Toe box still is good, but just not quite as wide, in my opinion, as, as the Energy 2.0. The Symmetros kind of fits the snuggest, in my opinion, of all of these, where I felt like there's more structure on the toe box that I mentioned. And it just it's just a slightly narrower fit. So forever the energy 2.0 definitely had felt like the most room, most flexibility. 3.0 had a little bit more like a little more normal width fit, and Symmetros is just a little snugger. So it just depends on what you want. Then can the Forever Floatrate Energy 3.0 make a good Mick Pat runner non-carbon marathon shoe? Heck yes. I would t this would make a great marathon shoe. I can say that from having run 522 miles in this and being able to do tempo runs in this in steady states. It definitely is a mid-pack runner non-carbon great marathon shoe. It's light enough uh, being at 8.5 um, ounces for a men's size 9. It's got plenty of cushion. It's got speed when you want to pick up the pace. So definitely a marathon shoe. Uh, for a lot of people out there. not I would personally prefer something lighter, but for a lot of people, that's just me though. I like super light, minimal shoes. I would probably personally would take the Run Fast 3 with my mechanics for a marathon. Oh, most people wouldn't. 
For other people, this is gonna make a great marathon shoot for that person. So Trey, yes, I would definitely say that. Nick said, how would, how do these compare to the original version, the 2.0? Yes, I love this stuff too. I did not get to try the original. Uh, Nathan's gonna have to speak to that. I put it on my feet. It was just, it was a little bit too snug for me. The 2.0, the biggest difference I would say outside of aesthetics and that a little bit of the fit where there's a little bit more room in the 2.0. The, the 3.0 has got a little bit more like streamlined fit through here. And the biggest thing to me is this heel bevel. It, this smooths out the rear foot so much. I love the 2.0. As you guys know, I'm sensitive to shoes not having a heel bevel. And that's kind of what was my one complaint about the 2.0. But this took care of that. So it's much smoother ride, a little bit more flexibility, but still really fast in my comparison to the 2.0. See, world, world runner as the laces, uh, better than the awful ones in the version two and Symmetra is my only issues with those two shoes. You know, I can't say the laces aren't my favorite. They've, they've stayed tied. They don't feel as secure as I would like them to be. And on longer runs, they do feel like they, if I've tied this tight, it does cut into my foot. So I can't say it's totally been fixed, but they are secure and they do a decent job. Frankie, the heel cup is, is there's a heel counter in there. It's not the most aggressive. I'm very sensitive to this and I didn't notice it. There's some cushioning back here in the here, heel collar. So it wasn't that bad. It's still, there's got some flexibility to it, but if you're looking for the most rigid thing, this is not going to have it, but there is still one back here. So not too much of a problem. Somebody at uh, white Mamba asked, are the insoles removable? Yes. They are. You can you can take them out. You can put other stuff in. The insoles are super thin, though. So if you put something else in there, it's going to take up much more room than probably was that it was originally designed. So just be aware it might fit a little bit more snug. Weight and cushion compared to version two from Dustin. Thanks, Dustin. This honestly, version two felt lighter when I first put it on my foot. When I went to go run, this feels a similar weight. Tacti by the specs, it's actually 0.2 ounces lighter. And when I start to move and run, I can, when at speed, I notice that. There's just a hair lighter, and I, but I'm sensitive to those things. Cushion feels a little softer and a little more forgiving at easy paces. That was the biggest thing I noticed. It just felt like immediately softer than version two. Not insanely, but I was like, ah, I noticed that but it's still super responsive. So when the pace picks up, this, the foam is resilient, meaning if you push in, you're gonna get pushed back. It's not just like sink and hang out there. So it's got some, when you push, it's got some pop. When you don't, it's just nice and cushion. Then we had Paul who asked, what were your issues with version two and have they been addressed? My biggest issue with version two and version one and a lot of shoes was the lack of an appropriate heel, heel bevel. To me, this, this addresses it. It's great. You know, to be honest, it to me, when I get up to speed, it's really stable. The, the midfoot to me isn't the most stable, but that's me personally. But when you get moving and you start you start rolling through, it feels great. So running at speed or normal paces feels much better. Like I said, I've done 20 miles on trails and, you know, I, I had a, got cut up a little bit. It wasn't bad at all for using a shoe that's not meant for trail, but my... my Ankles were wobbling a little bit for that, but normal runs, it's it's been okay. And I'm the stability guy. So we had also another question that I somewhat kind of answer, but can't answer is asking, are they going to make a trail version? Uh, you're going to have to find out. I can't say anything. And then the other question was, are we going to see a grow version of this shoe? And again, I can't, I can't say, but just know that the grow concept in line is gonna is gonna explode in uh, Reebok. I'm super excited for them to start moving in that direction. I think sustainability is a big topic right now, and you're gonna see Reebok go all out, and it's gonna be very exciting. And it's not just gonna be you know the grow. I I really like the grow. It's a great casual shoe. I was able to still run it and do eight mile runs in it. But you're gonna see Reebok pull some things that's going to blow you away. Cause I feel like when you see like a green shoe, you're like, ah, is this really going to be a performance shoe? And the grow showed it could, but you're going to see this on a different level. So I hope that answers your questions on the Reebok forever float ride energy 3.0. We're going to have a full review out here in the next couple days. We just got to get everybody on, on track with writing up the review here. But if you guys have any other questions, shoot them out. This was really fun and I'll hopefully get to keep doing some of this stuff. All right.
Please, again, just like our YouTube videos, please like, follow, subscribe, do everything you need to. We're on YouTube. We're on podcasts. We've got Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Please follow us there. Please reach out. We do. We may not respond the fastest uh, sometimes, like especially if you email us, like because I'm the one that responds to that. So apologies if you're waiting a little bit. But we do appreciate the feedback and we do appreciate questions because our goal, my goal with this website is to educate people and provide some answers about going, hey, what the heck is out there? So thank you guys. Have a great week and uh, keep asking good questions. Keep running.